Well, I, I've uh, in, inserted and Egypt um, compared to what it says in, in review. Um, and in a way, this is about the extra Asherubalit that chronologies such as the new chronology and centuries of darkness have to insert in order to solve certain chronological problems. And uh, so here, here's a modern map of the Middle East and I'll put in the various Amarna kings. Uh, so in Egypt we've got Amenhotep III and Akhenaten and in the Hittite lands, Superluliuma I is, is king. And in Mitanni, Tushrata is king. In Babylon, Kadashman Enlil and Bernard Buriash. And in Assyria, Asherublit I. To revise the Middle Assyrian kings, the, the normal sequence is Asherubalit the first, then several other kings, then Sukorti Ninurta the first, and uh, not really relevant today, later on, Tiglath Pileser the first. Now, the, these two were high points in Assyrian power. Um, and just to put this more in context, um, after, soon after Tiglath Pileser the first, you get a dark age. And then the Neo-Assyrians from about 900 BC. Um, most of us are happy with Neo-Assyrian chronology from then on, at least the history. Um, but um, for certain chronologies, including the new chronology, we need an extra Asherubalit for the Amarna period somewhere in this period here. The maximum shortening of that dark age is somewhere in the region of 150 years. Whereas for the new chronology, 350 years shortening of Egyptian chronology. Now, some of you may remember uh, Tom, who, wrote, who gave a talk here a few years ago and his book History Rewritten. Well, he simply downdated everything by 150 years so all the links still matched up. Uh, but anyway, we want to, most of us, I think, would like a bigger reduction than just 150 years. So um, I tried to trace pottery styles from Assyria to Syria and hence to Egypt um, and to see what the archaeology has to say. Um, now, now th there's, a, there's a problem in that Assyria is over here and the Euphrates River is in between there and the coast. Um, and this, this tends to be a, a barrier across which pottery styles do not cross. Um, and uh, just to reinforce that point, as a quote from Peter Feltzner, the border of Middle Assyrian official pottery in the West is in the region of the Syrian Euphrates Bend, where there is a northwest Syrian pottery tradition of the Late Bronze Age, with no typological comparison to Middle Assyrian pottery. So there's this sort of barrier. But, but there is one type of pottery that crosses that barrier. It's Nuzi ware, named after a site just east of Assyria called Nuzi. And, and it's uh, nice decorations with white on a black background. It's quite distinctive. Th this is a floral design. Um, uh, and there's more common is sort of patterned designs. Um, there's one here with some animals as well as floral, but, but mostly sort of geometric uh, patterns. Anyway, it's a fairly distinctive type of pottery. And it is found um, very widely. This is the site of Nuzi over here. And there's Asher there and Nineveh there. 
and it, it, it spreads right across North Mesopotamia to Alalak in the west there and it, it's typically orthodox chronology dated the first half of the 14th century and similarly in Alalak but now it's also found at Car to Kulti Ninurta here, one of the Assyrian capitals built by Tukulti Ninurta I. So there it is. And, but here it's dated the second half of the 13th century, about a century and a half later than other places. So this is a bit odd. Um, and just to uh, prove to you that uh, there is newsy ware found at Car to Court in Inerta, um, the, the First World War-ish German excavations found some of this pottery. Um, it wasn't known as newsy ware at that time, but again, you, you can see the black on white designs. Um, and I think a lot of these others are probably newsy wear. So there and there. Um, and the uh, German book was translated into English as Coloured Ceramics from Asher. And uh, this plate was called Fragments from Car to Corti Inerta. Now, nowadays we say Ninerta. So we've got that anomaly of the the newsy ware being much later at Car Tukulti Ninurta, built by Tukulti Ninurta I. And then moving to the, to the west, to Alalak, we, we find this late Teladic 3A pottery as well as newsy ware. So a few words about Alalak. It was excavated by Sir Leonard Woolley in the 1930s and 40s and recent excavations in the 2000s are ongoing, led by Aslihan Yena, a Turkish lady. One of her area supervisors was Amir Fink, and he reassessed Woolley's strata and published his own scheme in 2010. And, and this seems the best we have at the moment. Uh, un unfortunately, he fell out with Yena, and so that doesn't help matters. But anyway, um, uh, Barry also refers to Fink. Um, it's now generally agreed that the town of Alalak did not end at the end of the Late Bronze Age, Orthodox chronology 1200 BC, destroyed by the Sea Peoples, as Woolley thought, but it ended about a century earlier. Woolley got a couple of things wrong which caused him to extend the life of the whole city to the end of the Late Bronze Age. Um, firstly, an inscribed stone named a Tuthalia, who was a prince Tuthalia, not as Woolley thought the later Hittite Empire king Tuthalia IV. Most of the town was gone by Tuthalia IV's time, just leaving a Hittite fort and a temple. And secondly, because Woolley assumed that the Sea Peoples destroyed Alalak at the end of the Late Bronze Age, he tried to force fit Alalak's late Ladic 3A pottery to his scheme, wrongly labelling it as the later late Ladic 3B, which does run to the end of the Late Bronze Age. And um, late Ladic, as it implies, was an import from Greece. This is a couple of Late Aladic 3A pots from museums in London. Um, um, th th this is called a stirrup jar, that's the stirrup, and the spout has broken off. The spout was sort of there. Um, probably for you containing valuable liquids, and um, Th this one is largely restored based on similar pots found in Greece or elsewhere. 
using approximate orthodox chronology dates, later Ladic 3a is, is typically dated in the 14th century, and it's found at Alalak and at Amarna, which is dated about 1350 BC, Amarna in Egypt, of course. Um, and that's followed by later Ladic 3b, usually dated in the 13th century. Um, not found at Alalak or at Amarna. Um, Amarna, of course, being relevant for the Amarna letters and Asherubalit. So in between here, we've got the Hittite conquest of sort of Syria um, round about the Amarna period by Superluliuma I. And um, by 1300 BC, most of Alalak, the town, has gone, abandoned or destroyed, and only a fort and the temple continue. So there's, there's no late Aladic 3b found at Alalak or at Amarna, because both of them are gone by the 13th century. <coughs> um, and at 1200-ish BC, we've got the final end of Alalak, because it's the end of the Hittite Empire, I suppose. Um, now, at Alalak, we've got this sequence, Nuzi Ware first, late Aladic 3a afterwards. So Nuzi Ware was mostly before the late Aladic 3a pottery. This rather sudden change of imports from Nuzi Ware to late Aladic 3a seems to have been due to the shift from Mitannian influence to Hittite control. Fink wrote, approximately, the Mitannian influence with Nuzi Ware ended and another fine ware at Alalak, late Aladic 3a, became suddenly dominant. So at Alalak we've got this sequence, Nuzi Ware, then late Aladic 3a. Now Nuzi Ware links to Cartacorti Ninurta, built by Tacorti Ninurta I. Late Aladic 3a links to Amarna and Anasharubalit from the correspondence found at Amarna. But look, we've got the wrong order there according to the orthodox chronology because there Asherubalit comes before Tukulti Ninurta I. I think he was the great-great-grandfather of Tukulti Ninurta I. So, um, is this our Asherubalit II, who the new chronology desperately needs? It, it seems promising. Well, well, the orthodox chronology excuse, possibly Nuzi Ware was produced and used longer in Assyria than in other regions. And so the, the orthodox key chronology scheme seems to say Nuzi Ware starts way up here, then we get Nuzi Ware followed by later Ladic 3a at Alalak, which corresponds to Amarna and Asherubalit, and then we've still got Nuzi Ware um, over a hundred years later at Kart Korti Ninurta. So we've got a sort of total um, life for Nuzi Ware of at least a couple of hundred years, supposedly. But contrary to a long life for Nuzi Ware, Feltzner also wrote, there is no formal or decorative development of Nuzi Ware during its existence. Now for a decorated ware not to change for a long period is unusual. So, I mean, what this is suggesting is there isn't that gap, it, it closes up. Um, now, there's, there's three things I'm going to talk about. Uh, that was the first one, Nuzi Ware. Now, the second one is a, also seems to uh, confirm the extra Asherublit. It's a small site called Tel Sheikh Fulkani. 
and uh, here is the site from photograph from the neighboring village it's a small site on the Euphrates and um, you can see where the archaeologists have cut into the hillside there that's it there area E is published and the pottery they found So this fairly small site on the Euphrates is on the east bank, about five kilometres south of Carchemish, and was a rescue excavation for the Tishreen Dam project. Syrian Late Bronze Age pottery was found along with Middle Assyrian pottery. Fulkani is apparently the only known site on the Syrian Euphrates with MA pottery. And possibly this site was an Assyrian trading post in the reign of Tukulti Ninurta I when Assyrian prestige was at its peak and nearby Carchemish was willing or coerced to permit a small Assyrian controlled outpost. The site is too small for major fortified opposition to Carchemish. Um, so that, that's Carchemish and uh, Fulkani, just uh, a few kilometres south on the Euphrates. And here's a closer up picture of that uh, excavated bit. Um, you can see the scale from the people up there or the wheelbarrow here. Be because the tell was so steep, trying to, trying to expose more of these buildings sort of rapidly became impossible because of the amount of earth on top of it. Um, so this is sector E. And so looking down from up there, as it were, we get a plan of a building which had been destroyed by a fire. So it's called La Maison Brulee in the excavation report. Um, so they managed to excavate several rooms. Some of it had fallen down the slope of the tell eroded away and, and this is uh, that steep uh, bank where they've sort of excavated. And the, the pottery they found was uh, Syrian domestic pottery of the late bronze 1 to 2a. Um, now this may seem to contradict what I've said before. Apparently it's rather difficult to distinguish Syrian domestic pottery over uh, a longish period. But this is, this is undecorated pottery, unlike Nuzi ware, which is decorated. And you, you would expect to develop a bit over several centuries. And they also found Middle Assyrian II pottery, dated about the time of Tukulti Ninurta I. These are all orthodox chronology dates. And uh, so some of this, th this is from the excavation report. Um, some of these pots are uh, Middle Assyrian ones, although they didn't actually admit that in this chapter um, but number 19 here um, you can see it was found on the floor of room 3 and it's uh, compared they compare it to a pot from Tel Sheikh Hamad or Durkat Limu which are a site that I'll come on to a middle Assyrian site um, and they reference Feltzner top plate 102 item D and, and similarly this is a very typical carinated Middle Assyrian bowl um, and again they reference Feltzner plate 69 D and E which I'll show you so this is D and E which they're comparing it to uh, you can see it's a similar sort of small bowl with a, a carination or kink in the side. Um, a middle Assyrian bowl. So, we, again, we've got this 
over a century discrepancy um, between the, the Syrian late bronze pottery and the middle Assyrian pottery. And, and this is the one place where you find both in the same house destroyed at a particular point together. Um, if anybody wants to ask questions as we go along, I meant to say that at the beginning, please do. So we've got two lines of pottery evidence putting to Kulti Ninurta the first before the Amman period. Um, secondly, the Telshuk Fulkani, and firstly, the Nuzi ware. But now, um, there is also some contrary evidence which supports the orthodox chron chronology. And th this is coming from this uh, Tel Sheikh Ahmad Duakat Limu site. Um, um, so here is Duakat Limu. Um, the, the central Assyrian parts are over here, but then the Assyrians conquered over in this direction, including Duakat Limu. Now, there's been a lot of excavation at Duakat Limu and back in the 80s and 90s, and they've finally come up with an excavation report, the citadel of Duakat Limu last year. Um, yeah, this, this site is on the river Habur, a, a tributary of the Euphrates. You can see the Habur winding past the site there. Um, this, this is the citadel. And in later periods especially, the, the city extended right up here. So it was, it was a very large town for the time. And... Uh, um, the, 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 this is the citadel of Durkat Limu, and like on Sheikh Fulkani, they, they excavated on the steep side of the tell, in this case on the west side. And, and they excavated this, this long building which was a sort of storage and workshop area for some bigger building um, on this side. But again, like at Sheikh Fulkani, they were cutting out so much material to excavate over here that that was about as far as they could go. So we, we don't know much about this building, but this seems to be, have been, uh, as I say, storage and workshops for perhaps a palace here and uh, some slightly later buildings up here. And we're particularly interested in room A here. And here's a view looking into room A after it had been excavated. And what they found in here, uh, most of it had collapsed from the the room above and fallen into here. Um, and there was a great mixture of dated clay cuneiform tablets, Middle Assyrian pottery, and clay seals. So all of similar date, all mixed up together. So we've got dates in the reign of Tukulti Ninurta I and Middle Assyrian pottery and these clay ceilings, and it's the clay ceilings that I have a problem with. So th this one I'm not too worried about. Uh, they, they used lumps of clay to seal containers or doors, and they impressed a seal into it. Now, the vast majority of the seals are Assyrian seals, but um, about 30 of these bully, as they're called, had designs from two Egyptian scarabs. Um, and you, you can see this design, the scarab was impressed there and there and there, and somebody's thumbprint by the looks of it there. And 
in, the, in another chapter of the Execration Report, um, this was dated to the 19th dynasty, um, whereas I would be expecting late 18th dynasty. Now this particular design could extend back into the 18th dynasty. That's not a problem, but the next one is. So this is another of these clay bully. And this, this one also, is the, also shows the back. Um, I think this, that, that, the, the indent there must be the string or whatever, because um, you tie something up and then you put a lump of clay over the knot and then seal it. In, in this case, we've got both the design on the bottom of the scarab and the back of the scarab. So they didn't normally impress the back of the scarab, but in this case, they have and the, um, the design with two standing figures um, is sort of rather poorly impressed there and there and here. You, you can see one standing figure, the other one's sort of not been impressed properly. Um, and, and this is thought to be the god Tar, P-T-A-H, and um, uh, the other standing figure is probably Amun Ray. It's a falcon headed god. There's quite a lot of other impressions, some of which are a bit better than that one. And uh, this design, both the base and the back of the scarab, um, are both classified as 19th dynasty. So one of the experts on scarabs is. Othmar Kiel and uh, in a book he he wrote about particularly scarab, scarabs found in Palestine but um, there were an awful lot of them uh, so it, I think this probably represents what's found in Egypt and other places as well um, so so in most of these you can see the two standing gods Tar and uh, Amun Re and uh, Kiel states these items come mostly from Dynasty 19. The top row are Dynasty 18, but you can see they're rather different. Um, tar in the middle and two falcons or two falcon-headed gods or one falcon-headed god and a falcon. So they did have a slightly similar design in the 18th Dynasty. But he thinks all these are 19th dynasty. Um, this is a plaque rather than a scarab with, with designs on both sides. Um, that's another plaque. Um, the, the cartouche is Menkepere, the, the throne name of the III of the 18th dynasty. But that name was used long after his time. It was a very popular name. Um, and both these two plaques were found in a 19th dynasty context. Um, and I'll just show you something concerning the, the work on these scarabs. <laughs> Kiel has attempted to list all the scarabs found in Palestine and that there are about six volumes of this. So there's a lot, lot of work gone into it. And you, you get the designs and where they were found and um, what stratum, if appropriate, and uh, an estimate of the date. And now moving to the backs. Uh, this is another of Keel's volumes. Um, the, the back of our scarab, if you remember, was, was fairly simple. It was rather akin to these three. Um, I can go back to it. So there's the impression. I, I think the blob on the top is, uh, it was probably a finger ring. And, and, and that's the attachment, not really part of the scarab design. Uh, unusually, the lines sort of converge towards the top, 
whereas usually they're, they're rather different. Um, so a lot of them, the lines diverge at the top. It's a feature of the beetle's head. Um, well, so that, that one's got a diverging thing and somewhat. Anyway, so for these three, Keel says um, that they're particularly in the late Ramesside time. Um, so again, um, seemingly most likely um, 19th dynasty, although he does say here typical for the New Kingdom, particularly the 19th dynasty, without sort of making too much distinction. So that's my problem. Um, now coming back to our Middle Assyrian period, um, comparing this to the orthodox Egyptian chronology, um, it's Asherublit the first, who's contemporary with Akhenaten in Egypt, not, not our proposed Asherublit the second, who would be here somewhere. Um, and, and nicely, for the orthodox chronology, we've got Tukulti Ninurza the first contemporary with Ramesses the second of Dynasty 19, which seems to have been be confirmed with the I items found in Room A at Duakat Limu. Whereas what I would like to see on the new chronology, uh, the extra Asherubalit, I've put him as close as I can to to Kulti Ninurta the first. And, and then the Amarna period is here, slightly after to Kulti Ninurta the first, who, who himself would be about contemporary with Akhenaten's father, Amenhotep the third and Ramesses the seconds further down here. So we've got Nuzi Ware and Sheikh Fulkani supporting the NC and that wretched scarab ceiling supporting, supporting the orthodox chronology. So uh, that's where our, my researches are at the moment. Any, any questions? Well, over well, 150 years, crops up uh, all over the place. Um, years ago, I, I didn't know you were talking about called a little pool, <laughs> looking specifically at Alamac and the relations to uh, places like Colossus. Um, there's a clear 150 there. Um, it, so you're referring there's to... There's a leaping representation at, at Alamac, yeah. I think in level 7, which is about 150 years before you get any ball leaping in the whole of ball leaping in Crete. Okay. Uh, um, and I think the other thing, uh, the other Greek type thing was there's frescoes in, in or fresco bits in um, level seven at Alamac, yeah. which are identical to the decoration on the Vafio cups, the, the Greek, mm. the, the Greek cups found in Vafio, they're, they're okay. gold, I think, mm. but famous ones. And Alamac again, the Alamac ones again, about 150 years earlier, with exactly the same design in Greece. So there's. Looking from Alamac west to Greece and Crete, there's 150 years wrong somewhere. It's, um, I remember in the, what was um, David Roll's book, um, Just Lords of Avaris, mm -hmm. he tries to argue that bull leaping was a Syrian thing that got exported to Crete. Now, everybody disagrees with that. But using the conventional order of things, you can't argue with it because bull leaping appears 150 years earlier in Alamac than it does in Crete. 
So there's a there is a definite 150 pool there. But, it, uh, but he's putting out a lot later compared with Egypt, I think. Because Egypt ties up with Greece because of, of LH3 pottery and all this sort of thing. So, so th this, this 150 is, is right in the middle of, of, of Alamark. There's something really weird going on. Well, Alamark in Western Syria and Egypt and Crete should all tie up reasonably well because there's similar well, pots yeah, getting... Yeah, see, Alamark leads to Nutsi, doesn't it? Because of the uh, the simple like Chara way or Nuzi way, yeah, yeah. Um, so you've got you've got sort of Assyria pulling out of that one way, and Greece and Egypt pulling it the other way, and I and and as I said you end up with Alalak is dated too early. I don't think there's any doubt about that because uh, it just doesn't. It, you just get this complete discrepancy. With um, I think I think I picked up three things. I think it wasn't just um, the, the the wall leaping uh, and, and, and Knossos, the uh, the battle of cups, which is Greece, but there's also a fresco in Egypt, isn't there, um, from the time of Almos the first? Well, uh, tell uh, uh, tell a, a, tell a Darba. Grecian type. Well, the Cre Cretan. Uh, uh, freezes were found at Tel Dalba. Yeah. Um, no, I think you'll find. I think I, if I remember. And my, the dating of that changed. I think, I think uh, all those three things yeah, are yeah. 150 years later than the same things at our. Well, for example, the late Aladic 3A pottery at Alalak is presumably. The same century as it is at Amarna. Well, you've got to be careful with LH3A at Amarna. Yes, I know you say there were a few bits found in Woody five, found five, it five and in six. Earlier, in yeah. earlier strata and discounted it as being some problem. If you actually use it, the 150 years comes in again. But as it was Fink who said that the bulk of it was found in, I think it was his level three, uh, following the Nuzi Ware. Um, uh, I think conventional Alalak four, well, four, four is, is yeah. just prior to Alalak, I think, in convention. There's four A and B. What the, uh, um, yeah, four maybe going. Well, it's only getting three. There's not a lot left, is it? Two, like we say, my number two at Alalak is all sort of uh, virtually disappeared. I agree with you. Fink's work is, is excellent. Have you ever tried to demand out who was the contemporary of Tatmouth the third, the CBC's embassies? Put them all around, anyway. Uh, well, took most the third should be, of course, before the Um I had thought that uh, maybe Tukorti Ninurta the first um, was a contemporary of took most the third, um, but um, in order to try and minimise this problem with the scarabs, I. I I made a minute at the third contemporary with to call him the to the first. A minute at the third is uh, about the great grandson of Tutmos the third, I think. So, um, um, yeah, no, I'm not aware of any evidence to link Tutmos the third across as far as Assyria. Can I make a comment? Yeah. You've got this um, gap of 150, 200 years from an archaeological point of view. Doesn't it occur to you that your starting point might be where the error is? Your starting point is accepting Amarna tablets as being all dated from the same time. 
But the amount of provenance is terrible. Less than 10% of those tablets were excavated by anyone of any authority on site. The tablets were all bought from collectors and elsewhere, uh, shops and so on, and we have no idea whether the kings in the first eight or twelve letters are anything to do with the Mana period at all. And yes. if the kings were, as I think, um, later kings um, from the, the period of, say, Nebuchadnezzar, maybe a bit earlier than that, but anyway, you would then get that 200 year or 150 year difference if you've identified uh, Sopolimum sub as being a contemporary Romana because of one letter. Um, yeah, I, I have seen it argued that, yes, a lot of them came from the uh, antiquities market and uh, some of them we don't know where they were found. And, Somebody on the new chronology discussion group was arguing that they were some of them came from Thebes and dated to Tutmos the third. Well, you want to date them later? He was dating them earlier. Um, I'm not very convinced. I mean, it it does seem, as, or despite the uncertain provenance, uh, that they they appeared about the same time people were digging holes in Amarna. And then Petrie came along and found more of them. Yeah, there. But the, the whole of your dating on that first um, side comes from those Amarna letters. And um, the supposed uh, Babylonian kings. Yeah, yeah. And uh, Ashurbanipal. Um, if the Ashurbanipal letter was written by the grandson of um, Sennacherib, who was Sennacherib's son as a Haddon, and uh, Ashurbanipal was a brother of Ashurbanipal. Hmm. Oh, sorry, just a minute. <laughs> so there you've got your sort of gap of 200 years or so. Uh, okay, sorry, and say the last bit again. Um, I'm, I'm looking at the comparison. If you have actually valid as being the last king of Assyria, rather than a Mana period. Well, there, there was indeed a, a, an Asherud Yeah, I know, of course. At, at that but what I'm saying is, if, if he was the letter writer, mm. then you've got. Um, uh, what you call it, Tuluki Ninatoa. Well, if you look at his, um, what we know about him, he dies in exactly the same way as Sinatra, Sinatra did, killed by his sons. The Asherubit II is normally dated about 612 BC, I think. Mm. Um, uh, well, that, that was really you, 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 you can't bring the Amarna period as late as that. Uh, no, no, of course uh, the Amarna period isn't, but the letter could be. Um, well, I think the style of the cuneiform would be wrong for well, a, a Neo Assyrian. I would love to see uh, somebody commenting on the, the style of cuneiform in those letters because they are definitely not the same. Some of the letters are different. What, you can read them, can you? No, no, of course I haven't read them myself, but I've certainly read a lot about them. Okay. Any other questions? Did Jeremy Goldberg had some ideas about the second rearranged Yeah, his chronology was a bit sh a bit less drastic than Centuries of Darkness, I think. But well, I mean, he's come on to a bit fluid. But when he wrote those articles for, um, he had to come down to work, put it in a book, I guess, 
but <coughs> I used to write to him and he was speculating and all that. Okay. So he, he was somebody who was um, a fluid mind and he, he wasn't settled on any specific chronology. Well, you had two items which, archaeological items which suggested the 150 years, and one that didn't. Yeah. Well, I mean, the only thing... Did you I just say, well, two to one, you have to drop the one that doesn't? I, I sort of say I'm puzzled over the 19th dynasty yeah. scarab. Yeah. Um, I mean, the only thing I could suggest is that, in fact, that, that design did extend a bit earlier, because I'm only wanting to go to the late 18th dynasty. It's not so much earlier than dynasty 19. Uh, yeah. um, <laughs> I did look in some other chronology books. There, there, there was an earlier catalogue of scarabs from Palestine by Alan Rowe, uh, I mean, published, I think, before the Second World War even. And uh, he does give that back design um, 18th or 19th dynasty, so... If, if, the, if the scarabs were found in Palestine rather than in Egypt, I, I didn't find a very good book on e Egyptian scarab styles, but I, I, I mean, they were widely, they were popular in Palestine, as you can see by the quantity of them. Yeah. yeah. It's a classic thing, though, that if you're not careful, the decisions on dating them are very much... Um, influenced by the prevailing chronology. If you're not careful, autographs, and you've seen it many times, autographs chronology reinforces itself because everybody finds something and says, how does it fit with the chronology that is accepted? Yeah. And so you have a lot of things that you come across all the time. You know, is that real evidence or is it stuff that has been fitted to the uh, prevailing view? Well, I, I don't think it would matter to Keel. Um, I don't think he's got an axe to grind on that particular well, design. It's not an axe to grind, is it? It's, they work in that framework. They're constrained by that. Yeah, well, that well, 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 no, well, it depends what I'm saying is he could just, just as well have dated it 18th dynasty, dynasty if that's, that's what he thought it was. Well, it did. It, because it no, doesn't because matter. I think this is the problem. It depends where you find it. Is it found with something which specifically identifies an 18th or 19th dynasty? Well, I think, I think, or is it found somewhere that is currently some Assyrian place which is currently dated based on uh, the conventional chronology and therefore forces it to be 18th dynasty rather than you can actually take that scarab and say it was found in something found with something that is clearly 19th dynasty. Well I think uh, quite a lot of scarabs were surface finds or antiquities market but, but some of them were found in archaeological scrolls. Yeah. And, and I think those were found in Dynasty 19, later like it. Yes, but, so why are, they but the question years. is, why are those strata dated to the 19th Dynasty? Well, there are also scarabs of Ramesses II himself. And, um, and if they're found with great ways to be popular... Yeah, how, how, how much evidence has been discounted because it doesn't fit the chronology. We talked about the Lara, LH3N, late LH3N, found at Akatata. Didn't exist for very long, brilliant data. Yeah. Yeah. But, so that goes without saying, and what you, what you have to ignore is an H3B found in several sites with articles from Alexander the Third. 
Well, yeah, that's true. My Sinai itself. Uh, th that has to be ignored. It doesn't fit. And this is what I worry about in all this. How much has been ignored because it doesn't fit? Woolly, but it's an H3A. Uh, mm. That's too early for an H3A. It, it, it can't be wrong. That sort of thing is happening time and time again. No, I think in that case it's generally acknowledged that Woolley got it wrong, the, the experts on metallic well, pot pottery. It wasn't an H3A. No, no, it was an H3A. It was an H3A in 1906. Yes, but... Two levels too early. Yes, but a, 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 a minor quantity of, of yes. it. Yes. Where, where is the point of it? It's found in level four, I think. <laughs> One of the level fours. <laughs>
Mitanni, yeah. so, or even slightly contemporary with Mitanni, yes, you'd expect them to continue to use Nuzi ware um, because it's a nice decorated ware. Um, to Korti Nunerta wanted the best for his new capital, yeah. Uh, yeah. so you'd expect to find it there. And it was found at or in the vicinity of his new palace.